Mr. President, I appreciate the uh, majority's, majority leader's actions on trying to move us forward on a very important jobs bill. The Export-Import Bank is a way to fund manufacturers in the United States so that their products can be sold around the globe. It's kind of like a small business administration finance program for exports. We know the President has said we need to increase exports, and this is a program that's been in place for decades never controversial at this degree, and now all of a sudden, here we are, weeks before the authorization expires, sitting here arguing over whether we can move forward on this bill. I have great respect for the United States Senate, but there are some times when the United States Senate doesn't get to work out a deal, and we are presented with something that has been worked out by the House of Representatives. Now, we can go back to what the majority leader said, how we got in this spot, and that is objecting to every motion to proceed, objecting to every motion to proceed, objecting to every motion to proceed. Pretty soon, all the work stacks up. We try to move legislation, and every motion is objected to. So the consequence is we run out of time, and we run out of a way to get to a compromise. So in this case, guess what's happened? The House came up with the compromise. The House, even to the degree that some of the amendments that my colleagues wanted to offer, got implemented into the House uh, compromise bill that now passed the House of Representatives, whatever, 300 plus votes to 93. So my colleagues basically, by continuing to just try to derail the normal process here, we have had uh, to take now a House bill that I think encompasses many of the things that people wanted to see either in reforms or, or ways to make the bank more transparent or ways to make sure that we are focusing on things that are going to help U.S. manufacturers win the day in a very, very competitive market. So I would say to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Boehner and Mr. Cantor worked out a, a compromise, and so now we can, again, take more time here. You can analyze it. You can see whether you agree with that or not. And I certainly like when the Senate works out agreements, and oftentimes we've asked our House colleagues to vote on them. But we are now with a student loan bill that needs to be done, with this export-import bank that needs to be done, and many other important economic agenda items that we should get to for this country. So I hope that when this uh, cloture motion comes forward that my colleagues will realize that the only things that people are trying to do now are either they can vote no on the program if they don't like it because they are primarily amendments to defund the bank. So these aren't perfecting amendments to a compromise that's been worked out. These are people who want to express their opposition. So they'll have a chance to do that. Uh, so I hope for the sake of thousands of jobs in the United States, for the sake of U.S. competitiveness in a global market where these companies are competing with other companies all around the globe, that my colleagues will take a deep breath and realize this is a compromised piece of legislation, get it done next week and onto the President's desk so that we can go about winning more jobs in a very competitive global economy. That's what we need to do. And holding out one more day or three more days or another week just to get an amendment saying that you hate the Exim Bank is not the way to get things done for America. So I hope my colleagues will support moving ahead and get this onto the President's desk. I thank the President and I yield the floor.